Religion has always played a significant role in African society, influencing social dynamics, moral standards, and cultural customs. Nonetheless, despite the continent's wide range of religious expressions, a concerning pattern has emerged. The use of religion as a cover for financial exploitation and the maintenance of poverty. The relationship between religion and poverty in Africa is intricate and multidimensional, ranging from the over-reliance on miracles over realistic efforts to the financial exploitation of church leaders and the political exploitation of religious feelings. Written by Owaka Kevin Otieno. Read by Brian Thompson. The Economic Cost of Religious Abuse in Africa. In African societies, there is frequently a widespread conviction that miracles can alleviate financial difficulties, prompting people to put off taking aggressive steps in favor of intense prayers and divine intervention. Meanwhile, some religious leaders take advantage of their followers' confidence by pressuring them into making financial contributions in exchange for promises of wealth, healing, and miracles. Politicians also take advantage of religious feelings to increase their credibility and win over voters, frequently at the price of tackling important socio-economic problems. The historical connections between the spread of Christianity in Africa and European colonialism have left enduring effects, and outside forces are still influencing the religious landscape of the continent. As a result, indigenous knowledge and customs have been marginalized, weakening long-term solutions to economic problems. I live in Kenya, and the number of churches in this country is wanting. Citizens depend on miracles over work ethic. There is a widespread belief in the effectiveness of miracles as a means of overcoming financial difficulty in many African societies. This belief system frequently derives from ingrained religious doctrine that places a strong emphasis on supernatural blessings and divine intervention. Proverbs 12.11 talks about how people should stop fantasizing and put in diligent work, and it says, Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. Consequently, some people rely entirely on impassioned prayers and divine intervention, rather than putting more emphasis on doable steps like education, skill development, and business to improve their financial circumstances. These communities' work ethics may be significantly impacted by their reliance on miracles. The dependence on divine intervention may result in a passive response to economic difficulties rather than encouraging a culture of initiative, creativity, and hard work backed up with prayers that should be genuine, according to Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. People could get used to their situation and stop actively looking for ways to develop financially or improve themselves in favor of waiting for a promise from their religious leaders. Furthermore, by drawing attention away from practical solutions, the emphasis on miracles rather than work ethics might prolong a cycle of poverty. People may spend a lot of money on religious rites, offerings, and charismatic preachers who promise immediate prosperity, rather than on education or lucrative business ventures. This keeps people feeling powerless and dependent on outside factors for economic advancement, in addition to depleting scarce financial resources. Furthermore, Glorifying miracles as a way to get money and prosperity has the potential to skew people's definitions of success and diminish the importance of tenacity and hard work. People might not have the drive or fortitude to overcome challenges with hard work and persistence in a culture where miracle cures are considered the main route to financial success. This can impede one's own and their community's growth inhibiting creativity and economic advancement. I am not against Christianity. I am against religious beliefs. People should embrace Christianity, a position whereby believers understand that God gave us the privilege to work to earn, and it is observed in the Holy Book. 
a position where Christians understand that money and success are techniques that need to be learned. African churches play a major role in the fabric of society, acting as hubs for community life, spiritual retreats, and authoritative sources. Nevertheless, dishonest church leaders have the potential to abuse this power by taking advantage of their followers' faith and confidence for their own gain. Church leaders have significant influence over their flocks since they are frequently seen as spiritual experts. They may use deceitful methods and persuasive speeches to persuade members of the congregation to give money in exchange for benefits, prosperity, and heavenly favors. Others may take steps to promote gambling in exchange for faith and success in gambling. These assurances of spiritual benefits linked to monetary contributions establish a believer's sense of duty and remorse, which drives them to part with their meager means, frequently at tremendous personal sacrifice. Some church leaders will receive money from their followers in several ways, including through tithing, offerings, seed sowing, and promises of special blessings or miracles. Regularly, members are urged to give selflessly in the hope of gaining favors and opportunities later on. This process is said to be Panda Mbegu. People feel under pressure to donate more than they can afford to win the favor of God and achieve material wealth, which leads to a vicious cycle of dependency and financial distress. Furthermore, church leaders who take advantage of their members' financial resources may face serious repercussions for their financial security. A large percentage of income for many people, especially those from low-income families, may go toward church donations, leaving them short on cash for necessities like food, shelter, and medical care. This financial burden makes poverty worse and feeds the cycles of poverty in communities. Some religious institutions' lack of accountability and transparency permits unrestricted financial abuse and exploitation. Rather than engaging in social welfare or community development initiatives, church leaders may utilize the money donated by their members to support themselves, indulge in opulent lives, or buy expensive items. In addition to undermining public confidence in religious institutions, this resource mismanagement denies communities critical support and aid. Politicians in many African countries frequently take advantage of religious feelings to increase their legitimacy, solidify their hold on power, and win over voters. Politicians try to influence the public's faith for their political advantage, by pretending to acknowledge and praise God and associating themselves with particular religious leaders or institutions. Others even go ahead and spend billions of money to invite national and international televangelists, organize crusades, and give fancy names to attract citizens. In African countries, religion has a major role in shaping cultural norms, moral principles, and social cohesiveness. Politicians use this power to their advantage by projecting an image of religiosity and devoutness, appealing to the electorate's deeply held religious convictions, and since a large percentage of citizens are religious, they end up falling for this trap and voting them in. Politicians seek to appeal to people's emotions and faith-based views by using religious speech and symbolism to present themselves as moral integrity defenders and defenders of religious principles. However, the exploitation of religious identities and differences for partisan gain is a common result of the politics of religion. Politicians can use religious affinities as a tool to rally support along sectarian lines, escalating hostilities and creating rifts within communities, as I have said before. The stability and cohesiveness of society can be threatened by this manipulation of religious feelings, which can result in polarization, conflict and violence. Moreover, the politics of religion usually lead to the disregard of urgent governance problems and socio-economic crises. Politicians emphasize symbolic gestures and religious posturing to appease their electorate. 
rather than ideas and activities that confront poverty, inequality, and corruption. The pursuit of sustainable development and economic prosperity is hampered by this distraction from important problems. Furthermore, politicians frequently use religious rhetoric and symbols to further an environment of impunity and corruption. Politicians may use religious authority to defend immoral activities, deflect criticism, or avoid taking responsibility for their deeds. This damages the public's confidence in democratic institutions and thwarts initiatives to advance accountability, openness, and the rule of law.